Welcome to Build, everybody. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. They were a white supremacist skinhead on Orange is the New Black, and now you can see Asia K. Dillon on Billions, where they play Taylor Mason, the savant-like analyst who last season was named CIO of Axe Capital. Let's take a look at Asia's work on the new season of Billions. I am not hiding. I'm not cowering. I'm not defeated. I have to dominate. So why the hesitation? Fear? Rage. Let's just look at where I am. Indicted, thanks to your husband. We are home and we are a we again. What he did, it's a fucking crime. Maybe, but it's not a defense. Give up trading till the case is over. Let them trade for you. Axe moves closer to prison and order is restored in the universe. You got some wolf in you, which is why you're not getting fired. Not quite yet, anyway. When it comes to billionaires and Bobby Axelrod in particular, they're meat eaters. The only win they can live with is total. I want you to remind him what happens to guys like him when they take this big a swing and miss. He expects to get all of it, everything. Brutal. Do you walk in the valley of I needed total loyalty. I got less than that. The money, Bobby. Just don't lose it. You're telling me that you and your wife have no secrets? I'm certain some are still lurking. You shouldn't call me like this. I know. The people out there don't know who they're looking to. Since it can't be you, it needs to be me. You won't fall below the hard deck. Your ego just wrote a check. Your body can't cash. Aren't we all on the same side? Yes, of course. But no, not really. You threaten everything by your presence here. You know what I'd risk to get him. What would he give to get me? Whoever you're trying to destroy, stop. What has the stronger pull? Fear or money? Everybody, please welcome Major K. Dillon. Hi, everyone. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Uh, I love your character on this show. Thank you. It's such a cool character. How was it pitched to you? I, you know, as I was telling you backstage, I listened to this podcast called The Moment that is hosted by the creator of this show, mm -hmm. uh, co-creator of this show, Brian Koppelman, and he uh, interviewed you last week. Yeah. And uh, the two of you talked a lot about sort of, go, quote unquote, going on this journey together and the phone call that was made to you about this journey and making the decision. So how was the character pitched to you? Because clearly there was a, a, a sort of envisioned arc planned beforehand before pitching it to you so it's important for me to say first that every you know the way in which a character or a script comes my way is different every time um, in this instance I received an email uh, breakdown audition appointment time from my agents um, with the sides which is the excerpt from the script that I had to prepare for the audition and so that's how I first encountered it and then I had an initial audition with the casting director Allison Estrin and then um, sort of two callbacks after that with Brian and David, the co-creators, and then um, the third and final one with also the director of episode one of season two, Reed Moreno. Mm -hmm. And then- Moreno, the, the director who did- um, Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, and then uh, after that audition process, I was cast in the role. Um, and at that time, I was also acting on a show called Orange is the New Black. And so there was some concern about just whether or not logistically I was going to be able to do both shows. And I think the co-creators, Brian and David, were also um, not only concerned about the logistics, but just about the like physical and emotional um, ask of doing both of these roles at the same time. And so that's why Brian and I ended up getting on the phone, um, just to really connect about the fact that I was passionate about playing Taylor and that I knew that I could do both and, and, um, and that I was committed to uh, putting in that work. When you signed on to Taylor, what was sort of known to you about the arc of Taylor? Was it one of those situations where it's like, sign on for a couple episodes, oh, we really like 
having Asia here like that. We really like having Asia here. Oh, amazing. Let's, uh, let's, let's build out a bigger arc. Let's, let's flesh it out. Was it more like that? Or did you know right when you signed the paper that it was going to be, you know, you were going to be a continuing character for an extended period of time? I would say it was somewhere in the middle of, of everything you just said, which is I was, I was told that Taylor was going to be significant and that there was going to be a significant arc, but also it's TV. So you never really know, you know, and I don't like to count my chickens before they hatch ever. Um, and it was still an episode by episode contract. So even though I had been told there was going to be an arc, I, was st I still didn't know what that really meant or how many episodes that would mean. You know, I had no idea when I was cast that I would be in all episodes of the second season. And that you would end up kind of becoming the CIO. And so becoming, I had no idea, yeah. Yeah, like a kind of a huge player at Axe Capital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so what was it like when you got that script that kind of solidified that you would be around for a little while? The script for the final episode of yeah. season two, where Taylor becomes CIO. I mean, it was, you know, it's extraordinary. It's gratifying. It, it's... Um, well, they could have killed you off in the break I mean, between. They can do anything. That's the other... You could have been like, I'm, I mean, I'm ready for season three. You joke like, about that, but it's really true. Like, everyone's like, see you next season. And you're like, well, we'll see. Like, you know, you never know. They can do whatever they want. Um, so I'm just grateful for every day I get to <laughs> be there. I mean, you know... Finding out when I was offered the the series regular contract, it it felt um, incredibly humbling, incredibly gratifying, and I was really proud because it means that the people that I um, love and respect and who I completely enjoy working with, you know, that feeling is reciprocated, and so that is that's incredible. What's it like to play Taylor, a somewhat cold, calculating character? Hmm. Um. I love Taylor. I mean, I love playing them. I love how um, concise and direct and um, they are and how they get right to the heart of the matter. You know, I've learned a lot from them about um, uh, what it means to really um, step up and take control. And, um, and also playing them is, is fascinating. You know, they are a fully fleshed out uh, human being character in this world. And so the, the emotions that they experience, you know, the ways in which they navigate the highs and lows of being CIO, you know, as an actor, all, that's, that's the juicy stuff. And for me, it's just so much fun. When they gave you the contract for series regular, did they tell you where they were going to be going with Taylor? No. Really? Really. Well, because sometimes the, the, you know, right, creators of shows or showrunners will come to the actor and be like, this mm -hmm. is what we're thinking. Does that excite you? Where do you, what, do you, sure. you know, what do you think of that? There are certain things that happened during season three that the co-creators, Brian and David, did come to me a little bit ahead of time to say, this is something that we're, you know, we're going to be writing in to the show. Um, They're collaborators as much as creators and showrunners. Cer certainly, which is one of the really great things about working with them and working on the show. Um, but they didn't, you know, I didn't know going into the beginning of season three where season three would end, certainly. Right. Are, you guys, are you done shooting season, season I three? I wrapped the season on Monday, and then they wrapped uh, the season officially yesterday. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And it's coming out? And it's coming out on Sunday. Yeah. I know. Have you March 25th, 10 p.m. on Showtime. <laughs> Have you, have you ever been able to be a part of a show that was sort of shooting while it was airing? Or have you, has your sort of career at this point been made up of shows that are kind of released, well, with Orange is the New Black, it's all at once, and mm -hmm. with this, you're done shooting before the first episode airs. Yes, I have never been on a show that we were working on while it was airing. Yeah. I, think, I imagine it's a completely different experience, the way that they're changing things around. Yeah, I would imagine so. And although I will say, you know, we had the premiere event here in New York City for episode one last Thursday, and I hadn't finished filming yet. So we were already into, you know, the viewing and promoting, certainly, of the season before we were done filming. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's go back a minute to before on Just a New Black. Mm -hmm. And I know this because, once again, I listened to this podcast interview with you. Uh, you were doing this play in the city, right? This, like, four-hour or three-hour Five and a half hour. There, there it is. There it is. I yeah. undersold it, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, and what, what was this show? It, sound, it sounded fascinating. So the, the play was, um, it's called The Mysteries, and it's based on the Mysteries cycle, which was done um, yearly in England. Every year they would tell uh, the stories of the Bible. But what they would do is have sort of like the, 
the boat builders in the town tell the story of Noah's Ark, or they would have, you know, they would bring everyone together from the community to tell and share in these stories. And so this was a modern uh, radical reimagining and retelling of these mysteries stories written by uh, contemporary playwrights. And so there were 50 playwrights and 50 plays um, varying in length between, you know, one minute and 10 minutes, told over the course of five and a half hours with two intermissions. How many of them, how many of the 50 were you in? Oh gosh, I mean, at least, at least 15 or 20. I played Lucifer and so I had one of the tracks that lasted throughout the entire show. And as I said in, in the as, podcast. How did you play Lucifer? Was your Lucifer toned down or did you sort of come out like a member of Kiss or something? <laughs> kinda? Um, well, you know, because it was 50 plays written by 50 different playwrights, um, the character of Lucifer, I would say it was more of an exploration of, you know, when we think of someone like Lucifer, like the devil, you know, you think manipulative, conniving, jealous, evil. And if you, if you apply those characteristics to a human being, right, if you take the devil out of being a sort of mythical creature and make that someone a person, how do people end up like that, right? What is their origin story? Were they bullied? Were they treated badly as a child? Were they cast out from the metaphorical or, or literal heaven, you know, as we know happens to Lucifer in the story of the Bible? And so um, really for me it was about finding the... Um, the humanity w within the character of Lucifer. And actually, Lucifer means light bringer. You know, that, that's what the word actually means. And so I think I, using that as a jumping off point, that's where I went with the you character. Played, you played Lucifer as a joker, as <laughs> a light bringer, as, I, a, as the jester. I played Lucifer as, as sort of the, the child who, who wanted to be able to make the choice to love who they wanted to love and not be told that they had to love, you know, God uh, in the way that God wanted, and that's why Lucifer is cast out of heaven, and I think Lucifer is sort of the original, um, the original, uh, what's the word? Um, oh, I can't think of it. But uh, 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 example of um, what happens to someone when they are uh, cast out of a place because of what they believe in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, as a as an actor, uh, you are uh, whether intentional or not, are kind of bringing a sort of message to uh, how we discuss uh, gender. Mm -hmm. I saw an interview on Ellen, and just now when you refer to Taylor, you're referring to Taylor as they. Mm -hmm. When I introduced you, I referred I referred to you as they as well. Uh, at what point did you decide that this was going to be that you were going to that you were going to stick to this, and you were going to make sure that this is how people discussed you, discussed your characters, and that you wouldn't, I mean, because I would imagine for a lot of people coming up in the industry, you'd kind of sway with what would be, they would want to sway with what would be the easiest thing to kind of get by and sure. make money as an actor. Sure. Um, the biggest thing for an actor is to not cause any, you know, ripples when you're working or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. I. Um, not, not, not this actor, I think. No. Um, I think that, well, so, okay, for a couple years prior to being cast as Taylor, I began to refer to myself as gender fluid, gender queer, and I removed um, the feminine pronouns from, like, my online bio material, and I just replaced it with my name. You know, Asia is a performer living in New York City, or, you know, um, and that felt really good, but until the character breakdown for Taylor came my way, which said female non-binary, and I thought, I thought those words were the, meant the same thing. And how can you be female but also non-binary? Like, doesn't that mean that you're not female? I mean, I just really didn't. And I'm, you know, I've identified as queer for more than half my life. Like, I am in the community. And it just goes to show, like, that doesn't mean <laughs> that, you know, I or anyone who's in the community knows everything about yeah. what that means. And so when I looked up the word female, you know, and it says, you know, sex in reference to assigned sex at birth, biological sex, biological sex characteristics, the sex characteristics that we display outwardly, female. Non-binary gender identity, a gender identity falling outside the traditional boxes of man or woman. And so I thought, oh my gosh, like I can have the body that I have, um, and that doesn't make me a woman or a girl. That's not my experience of my gender identity. And that moment was really um, eye-opening, really like a light bulb moment for me, and it felt very, very freeing. Does that change? I mean, do you do the parts that you're you're going to take? Do you 
do you rec- are you request that they are non-binary or are you kind of I I mean that was such an inner No, it's okay. No, it's, I I know what you mean. You know, as an actor, I want to play the parts for which I am the best actor f- to play that role. That being said, um I would not play a role that um where it was necessary that the actor be, had been assigned male at birth and displayed male sex characteristics, because I don't. And I would not uh, play a role that had been written for a trans woman, you know, someone who'd been assigned male at birth but had medically transitioned in some way, either physically or, or chemically, um, towards a female sex and presenting as a woman. Um, that's not my experience. And there are plenty of trans women who could play that part, and they should be sought out and cast first, certainly. Um, On top of that, if I were to play non-binary characters for the rest of my career, that would mean that there were non-binary characters being uh, written and given uh, storylines and representation, and that would be incredible. Um, I also think that that it's important to remember that it's great that I am asked these questions, and also it's really important that we ask, you know, cis, actors these same questions like would you ever play you know a gay character and why or why not would that be okay or are you okay playing trans characters if so why why not you know I think these are important questions that we should all be talking about when you saw uh on the breakdown for 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 Taylor uh female non-binary did you end up having a conversation with uh with with Brian and David the creators did you did 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 the three of you talk about the character and and what those things meant so um we did not discuss it before I was cast for two reasons. One, it would have been illegal for them to ask me um, how I identified. And two, I didn't... I necessarily mean before cast. No, I sure, I'm yeah, just, I'm con- just yeah. uh, fleshing out the, the question and answer. Um, and I didn't want to get the role because of my gender identity. I wanted the role because I was the best actor for the part. After I had been cast, and, we ha- and Brian and I got on the phone that night... Um, to just talk about the logistics and and all of that, you know, we did talk about why the character meant so much to me. And it was one of the reasons why I was like, I can do this, I I can do this. Like this, you've cast me and I can do it. So let's let's do it. Yeah. Uh, Let's have some questions from the audience. Who has a question right here? Hi. Hey, how are you doing? I'm well. Oh my gosh, you could stay seated if oh, you want. It's, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> if you want. He's got to move it, you know. <laughs> yes, keep the blood flowing, actually. Well. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, you kind of posted your mission statement as an artist. I think it was um, yeah. when you were in Washington at the Shakespeare Theatre Company. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that post, it was very heartwarming that you wanted to um, convey your, what mark you wanted to make as an artist, and that mark would have to uphold your values and morals. Now, scroll forward, fast forward to Billions, now that you're sort of um, a regular on the show, and also um, people around the globe uh, admire you. You're a very good role model. How has that statement evolved over that time from Washington to now? That was the question. Thank you for that question, and I love that you've seen that video. Um, The video this person is referring to is... um, I did a play at the Shakespeare Theater Company in Washington, D.C., but it I was a ostensibly an intern, so I wasn't making any money, and I don't come from money, and I've worked in restaurants for 17 years alongside being an actor, and Good. I needed to... Yeah. I don't trust anybody who hasn't... Totally. I think restaurant. everyone should work in a restaurant or retail or some customer service position, <laughs> certainly. Um, and so I didn't... I needed to raise money, and I had to figure out a way in which I felt comfortable asking people for money. Um, And ultimately, you know, art is the thing that has always sort of cracked me open and sent me on a journey towards deepening my own understanding of my compassion and empathy and my own humanity. And I want, as Nina Simone said, art should reflect society. And so that is my goal as an artist, is to make art that is reflecting society, um, encouraging conversation about the ways in which, um, for economic, uh, social, and political reasons, we are separated from our humanity, which separates us from each other. Um, And I want my art to always be uplifting and supporting historically marginalized and historically disenfranchised people. And I would say that, you know, that is what I put out, and I feel like Billions is one of the things that I got back, which allowed me to be in a position to create representation and visibility, play this um, 
fully fleshed out, you know, character on a major television show where I think Taylor was probably the last thing anyone expected to see on that show. So it feels like a, a continuation of a commitment that I made, you know, a long time ago, and I'm just working every day to maintain that commitment. Yeah, thank you. I think I'm time for one more right here. Hi. 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 So I'm a huge fan of the show, Thank and you. I think you're wonderful in your role. Thank so congratulations, and I will be tuning in on Sunday. Thank you. So my question is, I think it was last year, MTV changed their awards to be more gender neutral. Mm -hmm. And I was curious if you felt that, if you think in the future, other award shows will kind of follow suit as characters like yours become more popular and just kind of the whole gender neutral um, genre, so to speak, mm -hmm. becomes more commonplace and mainstream. Well, thank you for the question, and I certainly hope so. You know, the words actor and actress, the word actor is a non-gendered, non-sexed word dating back to Shakespearean times that is in reference to any performer. And the word actress came into being to specifically uh, denote people who were assigned female at birth, present female sex characteristics, and or identify as women. I don't identify as a woman, and I don't believe that um, external sex characteristics should be a prerequisite for the way in which we then separate people in order to judge, critique, and award their art. That's archaic. Um, and we don't do it for best directoress, best cinematographeress. We only do it for actress. And I think, I think it's fine for uh, people to identify as actresses in their everyday life, but when it comes to awards, if we are separating people based on sex, again, that's archaic, and if we're separating people based on gender identity, not only is that archaic, but it's not inclusive. You know, there's more than two sexes, there's more than two genders, and I think, you know, the future is inclusive, uh, first of all, the future that I see. Um, and, and if what happens is they remove gender, sex from the categories, right, and what we get is, let's say, eight white cis men who are nominated and you know one cis woman of color and one trans person, we're all going to see that and we're all going to have to talk about it. And I think the important thing is the conversation because actress was a band-aid for a problem that has not been solved because it allowed Hollywood to pat itself on the back and say, well, we made that change and so everything is okay. But we know it's not okay. We still have all the other categories um, dominated by white men and we're not really talking about that either. So I think it's just really important to begin to have those conversations at large. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Asia, uh, Billions. Yes. Season three. Yes. This weekend. Yes. March 25th. Yes. 10 p.m. Yes. Showtime. Yes. Can't wait. <laughs> Looking forward to telling Asia, can't tell everybody. Thank Let's you so it. much. Thank you.